Hey everybody, Andy here, helping you build a career you love. Today, we're really gonna help you build a career you love. I've got a talk on how to build the right skills for yourself, for your profession, for your life. It's something that I don't think I've come across anybody in my 33 years of working that has actually done this deliberately, proactively, because there's just not a lot of, it's never been taught. There's not really things like this available out there. So I'm gonna talk with you about that. I'm gonna talk with you about the skills that I think will, will do the most for you. I came up with 46. We're not gonna discuss all 46 today, but I thought to myself, I was building out uh, some uh, methodology for my leadership coaching program, and I was asking myself some questions, like in my 33 years of my professional life, if I had to go all the way back to 22-year-old Andy, I asked myself these questions. I got a bunch of note cards today. I hope you enjoy them. What skills would I build? Which order would I build them? And why in that order? So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna take you through uh, what I built, an approach that you can use. You can channel it into your own career to think about what skills should I, I, I learn first? What sh skills should I learn second? And so on. I've got five tiers or stages. I've given them all names. I'm going to share that with you. I'm going to explain to you why I would do them in that order. I'll give you some ideas of what kind of skills I'm talking about in each of the, in each of the stages. And then I'll give you a tip. Uh, kind of one of my favorite tips uh, uh, along the line so that you, you understand, you know, kind of how to, how to take and implement those those skills. And then the other thing is, if you're interested in more about what these skills are, what every tier looks like, uh, and actually all the assets to help you build them, I think 40 of the 46 skills or something like that, I've already built that. So I'm going to show you that in my leadership program if you want to stick around. Then if you're here with me live, we're going to go to the Q&A. If you're, if, you're, um, if you're here with me on the recording, I hope you chime in on the comments. But no matter where you're watching this from, Tell me who you are, tell me where you're from, tell me what you do and what you need. Put some question marks in front of your questions if you're here with me live or drop me in the comments if you're watching this on the recording. Okay, back to this. What's the, what's the problem, what's the challenge? We, get out of, we go to school for a, what? A trade, right? To learn I, how to be an electrical engineer, which was what I was. You might have been a business major or a biochemistry major, whatever it was, then you got into your professional life, whether you carried on with what you studied in school or whether you switched to something else like I did, like an IT and management consulting professional, and what do they do? They spend a lot of time, and you spend a lot of time, the companies and you, on helping you build your trade, which is one of the easiest things for you to learn. You get on the job training, right? You're gonna learn that naturally through effort and time. You also can go to certification training, you learn how to code in this language or in that language. But have you ever been taught about those foundational capabilities, those skills, character traits, and things that truly trans transcend the specificity of what you're doing at any time? So I'm talking about the foundational skills and the tangential skills that will make you the best at your trade, that will make you enjoy your career the most and your life the most. And so what am I talking about? So if you look at, if you kind of take my career over 33 years, don't worry, I could do 33 years in under 30 seconds. I started as an IT and management consulting professional, but what didn't make me great was how to know the languages I was developing software with, that's not what makes you good at that, at, that, uh, at that profession. It's how do I interact with my clients? How do I get them to trust me? How do I show them that I'm organized? I have a persuasive argument, make the case so that I could help their businesses grow. That has nothing to do with the technology, right? It's those kind of skills. Or when I became an executive recruiter, learning the mechanics of an executive recruitment desk, you can learn that in an afternoon. Right, what makes that profession very, very difficult, which is why most people don't even, 80% don't even make it 12 months in that profession, is because they don't understand human behavior, psychology, how to build trust, how to build relationships, how to elicit information, all those other skills that make great recruiters great recruiters, or, or anybody for that matter. And then as a career coach, it's the same kind of thing, being able to help you based on reverse engineering what I've done, sharing it and teaching it with you, motivating you to, to get in motion and feel confident and build your confidence. Those are completely different skill sets. Do you know what those are? Okay, so wait, so let me engage the chat here really quick. Uh, give me a yes or no. Have you ever been taught 
those kinds of skills. And we'll get into some of the, de we'll get into some of the, the, the detail here, but have you ever really been taught that? And yes or no, and then if you think about skills like that, for your profession, now I'm gonna give you a, a, a pyramid that I built or an approach that I built that would apply to any profession, but for your particular profession and where you see yourself going, can you go in the chat and tell me what you think the three most important foundational skills are? So don't, don't, don't talk to me about I need to learn Java better or I need to learn this language better. But if you're a marketer, what are your skills? It isn't how to develop the white paper to do content. Like, what are the foundational skills? Let me know. I'm going to get into what these tiers are, and then I want to revisit this chat toward the end uh, when we get into the Q&A. Or if you're watching this on the recording, I will comment back. Okay, so I asked myself, what are the skills? Which order would I go at them in? Why that order? So that I could ultimately come up with the ultimate set of skills that I think any professional who can learn them will just be a killer, would just be absolutely, absolutely Awesome, and I came up with 46 over five stages. So we're gonna run, we're gonna run through that. And I endearingly named each stage because you gotta have names and logos and things for everything because you never know what I might wanna do with it like badges and challenges and things like that. But first stage, this isn't, ro by the way, I'm not here to blow you away today. I'm here to give you an organized approach. This isn't rocket science, but the beauty is in the organization, understanding what and why and then doing it, okay? So number one, bottom tier, the producer. What is that about? Managing yourself effectively and delivering value of outputs, okay? Pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. What are we talking about here? As an example, I came up with 12 skills, but we're talking about things like, you know, have you learned how to focus? Have you learned how to develop really, really great habits? Do you know uh, how to build confidence. Do you, do you have patience? Patience is not waiting and relaxing. Patience is working your butt off and sticking with it. That's actually a skill that can be practiced. These are just a few examples, but this is the kind of stuff, and, and as, you can, as you can see where I would go with the, with the foundational tier, things like your goal setting, things like your productivity and your organization and other things of that ilk, that's what I'm talking about. This is, this, this tier is the one that people have the most trouble with, if you can imagine that. But it's, but it's first. Now, why would I have this as tier one? So generally speaking, when you look at skills like this, it's only you, so you can practice them and learn them on your own. It, they take a very long time to build and they require constant attention and practice. And once you dial them in, if you actually maintain them, do them day in, day out, practice them day in, day out, stick with your routines day in and day out, they vary little, meaning they, they, they have little variance over time if nurtured properly. And they also are instrumental in facilitating all the other skills that you need to build. Okay, are we, are we tracking? Can I get a Heidi Hay in the, in the chat? Are you following me? There's a dozen of these skills that I think are paramount. Here's a, here, here, there were a few of them, and this is why. Now, what's the biggest challenge in, in, in building these skills? We live in a distraction-based world, okay? We, we very few of us understand direction, proactivity, thoughtfulness in planning and execution. And we do this to other people Right, our needs are most important and we, you know, we constantly think about, wait, think about, wait, just think about this. You're walking around your house and a thought pops in your head and you're gonna go and interrupt your spouse with whatever your spouse is doing, right? Sounds silly. Boss pops in your office, hey, I just thought of something, I wanna talk to you, right? That's interrupting, right? So, so how, how do you become more deliberate and plant? You see this thing right here? This thing is a phone. Right, it's actually not a phone, it's a computer. It's a computer that allows me to make calls, except it's got a whole bunch of apps on it. Right, do we do this to ourselves? There is not one alert on that phone. There's no bubbles, 
There's no, there's no, Andy, you have 7,000 emails to open. There's no bang. Hey, you're, this is, this person's calling you. That person's calling you. It's on do not disturb perpetually, right? That's what I'm talking about. And it's an extreme example, but it's one that I'm talking about that the number of skills go along with that. Can you do that? Do you actually even know how to do that? Because you've been conditioning yourself to be distracted. You're really good at that now. How do you go the other direction? All right, so I'm going to give you a tip here. Uh, obviously, there's, there's 12 skills. I'm going to give you one tiny tip, but I want to get you thinking about how to approach this tier. So those people who are in my productivity course, my productivity challenge, it's a, it's a six-dayer. I teach you about this. This is one of my favorite ones, and it is mind-blowing to me how few people do this. But... When you plan your day, so just from a just from a getting yourself in order, managing your own work and all that good stuff, my fav- one of my favorite tips is you plan your day by your schedule, the outputs that go along with it. You do not run your day by a to-do list of items that you hope and pray you'll be able to accomplish. I've told you this on many occasions. It blows my mind why people think they can accomplish so little over the course of their lifetime, but they think they can accomplish so much in a single day that rarely ever gets accomplished. And most of the time, their to-do list, if they're running their day that way, is being interrupted by somebody else's to-do list that could come in the form of phone calls, knocks on the doors, or emails, or texts, or whatever. Okay, so what I do is I run my life by lists, and I teach about this in the in the productivity training among other assets that I give you. I have lists. Those lists are master-based. They're they're project-based. The projects are broken down to the quarter, to the month, to the week, and then the items are planned for the week, and then the schedule of the day is planned in the week in advance, and then the night before, according to every minute is blocked based on what I need to produce. And every single day I produce short-term stuff, meaning it's due that day. Long-term stuff, meaning it's not probably due for longer than a month or longer. Or mid-term stuff, something that might be due the following week. Every minute's accounted for and the deliverable, the output, the high value act of what I'm gonna do that's gonna produce a high value output says, I'm doing this at 9 to 9.20, and at 9.20, this thing's going to be done. The email's going to be written. Between 9.30 and 10.30, I'm going to be with Sally doing the coaching session, right? That kind of stuff. So it's real. Don't, don't run your day by a to-do list. Too many ways to get interrupted. What's the, the, the age-old saying, right? To-do lists are our graveyards where important but not urgent acts go to die. Remember that. Okay, all right, next tier. We're working up the imaginable pyramid that I'm gonna show you here in a minute. Uh, the second thing is the communicator. So now I want you to communicate and interact with others. Interact with others via communication vehicles to build relationships. Okay, so talking with your teammate, talking with your customer, talking with your boss, anybody that you're gonna serve, whoever it might be, your friends, I don't really care. The communicator is the second stage. It is, we're talking about not just, hey, I need to speak well, write well, right? Those kinds that they send a nice email. But I'm talking about embodying this with skills that help you build those relationships. So things like empathy and and all the communication vehicles, storytelling, how to react to things, right? That is communicating with others. These are just an example. I came up with eight of them. Here's, you know, three or four of them. And when you think about this, you know, these are these are really, really important. All of you, I don't care who you are. Stories connect us. It doesn't matter what age you are. Any 22-year-old that's out there has lots of stories. We're going we're gonna to talk about this in a minute. But do you know how to actually tell a story that connects? That's part of communicating with others, right? Just to build rapport. All right, so that's those are some example skills. Why would I want this to be in tier two? Well, these are the things that, I mean, we're, we live in a world of people that will never change for all time until we all die, right? So this is really important. We need to be able to get in, in 
and interact with others, it takes a long time to build these skills effectively because when you're communicating with others, it's not just your communication ability. Do you know that I communicate uniquely with each person that I interact with uniquely? Right, so that that is a that is a skill that is built over time. It takes much, it takes loads of time to practice across all the different communication mediums, and it's it's it, it takes just takes a long time. It takes a long calendar time to build this stuff. So you've got many variations, many kind of people you're interacting with, many different communication skills. So so think about that. What's what's really some of the bigger challenges? Let's put this in a different context. This is not just about speaking and writing, right? You are not the center of the universe. You have not ever in your life had an experience that you were not at the absolute center of, right? Everybody else in this world, you know, as the joke may go, is in your way, right? We need, how do you stop that? That actually takes practice. Are there ways to do that? Sure, in how you build empathy. Empathy is not a feeling, it's a skill that has to be built. How do you do that? You have to intercept your automated thinking. How do you do that? It's harder to do that the older you get when you get more stuck in the way you were automated and built yourself. So, so that this is a huge challenge. The stories that connect you to people. I would argue, I, I could sit down with any one of you and in, within 15 minutes come up with three major stories that changed your life that if you if you shared those with people, it would, it would better connect you with people, it might more endear you to people, it might help other people. So going back to what I was saying about somebody who's 22 years old, and you think, well, Andy, I haven't done anything yet. That's not true. There's a lot of things that you've done. What you haven't done is paid attention to them or attached the meaning to them that shows you how paramount they were in your life and how illustrative what you went through can be for others and their benefit. This is a skill. It's, it, it's something that takes practice. It's something that you have to think about that you're not wired to think about. It takes in a lot of situations. So, so I, want you, I, want you to, I want you to think about this, that, that it's very difficult to interact with others and step out of our own way of thinking. I'll give you a, a little example because it's real recent. Friday, I went to go meet a buddy, super guy, in his 50s, he wrote his first book. It's not published yet. He wanted me to read it first. And he wanted me and some others to give him some, some feedback on it. It was a good book. And it was about um, a number of things that will help professionals. And in the, in the prelude that he wrote, there was something that he said. And the way that he said it was talking about he wanted to convey how he thought you would benefit from the book, except it came off as, though, the real benefit was his joy in writing it. And when I explained to him how he needed to share with you, the readers or the audience or whoever, how they were going to benefit and the joy that he got out of doing it while important and something to share was not the primary point, except that's an example of how we process this world. Even though it was not in any way his intention, but it's in the writing and it feels that way to somebody else. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about, right? And this is a well-adjusted, very successful professional that consults on, on many things. So tip on this is you got to learn to intercept your automated thinking and lucky for you, there is a 35 minute video coming out tomorrow. So it, most of you are gonna be watching this on the recording and the ones that are here with me that are watching this live, you're gonna get a video tomorrow on how to change your thoughts and build self-confidence. And I address uh, how, to, how to intercept that automated thinking, how to help you with empathy, but also how to help you not only in your thoughts as they relate to others, but your thoughts as they relate to you. So there's a video that you can watch that will help you do this. All right, uh, commercial announcement. If you're enjoying this, make sure to hit the like button, share it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm rolling on with number three. Okay, number three, here's where you become more of an influencer, and let's influencer not in the proper name like somebody might call me, but, but just being influential, right? Using communication vehicles to deploy logical and tactical, ta uh, logical and emotional tactics to influence positive behavior in others. So now you are moving other people. 
into a better state of mind. Okay, so that that that's gonna that's gonna take some doing. Am I right? What are we talking about here? What kind of skills? Persuasion, presentation, right? Influencing skills, negotiation, maybe getting what you want as well. Collaboration, facilitation. I came up with 11 of these. This is what I'm talking about. And you can see as we're working our way up what so far to you is a figurative, is a, is a figurative pyramid. You can see how the skills are being built upon so that the ROI is compounding as you go through the different tiers. Why would this be tier number three? Well, obviously it takes you time to develop expertise in what you are being influential about. I laugh. You cannot believe what's going on behind this face when I see 28 and 29 year old career coaches trying to explain to you about how they've lived a fulfilled career and can tell you how you can find the right job when they've barely been able to hold one themselves. That's fine, okay? I don't think you can earn the credibility if you don't have the mileage on you. You just need to know how to, you need to know all the chords and how to pre and play them in order to make the music. What drives other people? You haven't seen enough until you've seen enough different people and you actually can put it in a perspective where you understand what registers. There's a level of grit. We are not born with grit, it is built. And authenticity, while we may be authentic in what we do, if I tell you I care, that doesn't mean you're gonna believe me just because it says I care about you. What has to happen? It's the way I convey it to you, yes. It's the way I convey it to you the second, the third, the 50th time. Yes, consistency. It's demonstration of actions. That takes time, right? It's actually taking the time to listen to you, taking the time to respond to you, taking the time to build the relationship. Then you say, I feel like you care, right? That authenticity, while you may be authentic, takes time to practice. So, so this, is, this is built over, over time. So when you think about what the challenge is, is that when you're influencing other people, the biggest challenge is most people are wired to process this world based on the whiff them, what's in it for me, right? Going back to the book example, uh, it, it's just a better way to connect with the audience, but that's also because the audience is human and naturally, this is what goes through, through people. Why am I listening to you? How will I benefit from this? Why would I, I get hundreds of messages in my inbox every day across the platforms about people wanting something from me. Come on my podcast, come create this course and let me you know, uh, white label it. Come and do this and that. Hey, would you look at my resume? Hey, would you do this? Hey, would you do that? None of them explain to me why I would even wanna to bother to respond, let alone do what they're asking. Right, this is the way the world works. It will always work this way. So you need to recognize it. That's, your, that's the challenge. Now, I got a challenge for you. Maybe my team can drop this in the chat or we'll drop it in the description when we cut this up real nice for you. You probably don't know about this challenge, but I've been running it for years. Uh, I have a master your craft challenge. This will actually help you build the right skills to become very influential and the best at your trade. It's a nine dayer where I give you like a one to three minute video each day. I give you a workbook that takes you through nine or 10 different skills that I want you to build. Um, the team can, can drop that in the chat and then it's free and I just send you an email every morning, probably at seven o'clock my time, and you get workbook in the first email, and then you get the little videos each day. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. So take, take, take that guy. All right, number four is the developer. The developer is somebody who can motivate and guide teams or individuals to achieve the desired outcomes. Okay, now, you're responsible for the people. So you're not just influencing them, but you're dang responsible for them. What are we talking? Hiring, managing, coaching, managing change. I came up with nine, so there's five more of these. This is what I'm talking about. So as I work up the chain, can I actually handle this? Do I have the right kind of management skills? Why is this, why is this so tough? The challenge here is it takes time to observe the learned behaviors, but, and, and, and they're dynamic because we're all individual. But a big thing is you need to understand people's feedback languages. I teach about feedback languages 
in my leadership um, program in the session on coaching others. And what do I mean by feedback languages? Well, if you've ever heard of the five love languages, right? If, if you haven't heard of the five love languages, it's kind of a well-known and actually quite awesome way to describe interaction among people in relationships, like a husband and a wife or two partners or whatever it might, or a husband and a boyfriend and a girlfriend or whatever. Okay, and it talks about the, the way that they will strengthen their relationship by the language they use. But if you, if you are communicating in your love language or your feedback language, but the other person that is not their preferred language, then you're gonna have a problem. So if you want me to appreciate you in a certain way, and that's you know your, your language for appreciation is you want me to show you the money, that's gifts. But my way of appreciating you is by spending time with you, quality time. We're not going to make it, okay? Uh, now, now you guys are all going to be thinking about your relationships. But the point is, the feedback language is important for you to assess with the people you manage. This takes time and care, right? These are skills that you have to learn when you're managing people. So this, is, this can be very challenging. I got two tips here. Um, number one, you get a twofer because this is about hiring and this is about interviewing too. So there's five to six big areas that whenever you're hiring somebody and then, okay, flip it folks, for any of you that are job searching right now, if you're interviewing, you gotta be able to tell these stories. If you're hiring, you gotta be able to evaluate these, these areas. Passion, pro how they solve problems, the value they'll contribute, developing people, serving customers, and how they handle mistakes and failures. Those are the six magical ones, okay? Lucky for you, this tip, there's a video out there on five on my YouTube channel about five stories you should tell in a job interview. And tip 4B is, I don't know if you know this, but you need to grab the hiring prophecies. Now, this guy is the gold award-winning book beat out over 8,000 books, literally. I'm not making these numbers up. 8,000 books in 2015 for the 2016 Best Business Careers and Sales book. Yes, by a committee had to review all these books. God love them. Okay, it's on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or Books A Million or wherever the heck you want. If you're in my leadership program, I send you a signed copy. So, uh, so that's that's another tip there. And then to round it out, uh, tier tier five, you become a visionary. You're be, you're able to create needle moving ideas. You're able to implement and move the market. You're a, you're 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 not. In the, we won't say your iconic status. You know, you're not John Madden in football, but. You know, you're a, you're a mover. You are a you are a needle mover. So what what's that all about? Being able to synthesize something. So as we grow up in our stages, we we are analytical, right? We break pieces apart. But but the strategist, the visionary, actually has strategy development skills, but can synthesize what's going on. And then level of creativity and being able to come up with with needle moving ideas and actually implement them is something that takes a long time expertise to build. I have six skills in this category, but as you can see, all the others tend to be prerequisites in form or fashion. That rounds out the 46 if you're keeping score at home. And the tip here to round this one out is I got a video on YouTube. It's a great one. Four simple ways to come up with great ideas at work. Watch it is part of my excellence planning methodology. And you could look at how I approach brainstorming with myself. That's how I brainstorm. I don't brainstorm with others. I don't think brainstorming as a group creates the best ideas. I think brainstorming as a group creates medium and lukewarm ideas because the ideas are brought back to the, to the median and the most creative person is dragged back by everybody else in the group. The best way to brainstorm is you all separately come up with great ideas, you get together and you take the best idea and you make it better. That's the way to brainstorm. But anyway, that's for another day. All right, that's number tip number five. Now, let me show you what this actually looks like to kind of, just to kind of recap and wrap this, this talk up. So I built this uh, skill building pyramid and I'm going to show you one, one quick slide here of what this really looks like. And the artwork's actually being done. But basically, the producer, so this is just a recap, operating independently. So those skills that will help you do that. How do you become at managing yourself? Focus, habits, organization, goal setting, those kinds of things. And being able to produce outputs of value. Next, coming up, the communicator. 
interacting with others. So how are you actually understanding human modes, how to use communication vehicles to actually build relationships with other people? So it isn't just about how eloquently you can present your, 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 uh, your story, your case, but really understanding how to build rapport with others. And then influencing is actually influencing others in a positive manner. So taking those communication vehicles, whatever they might be, writing, speaking, emails, I don't care, and deploying logical and emotional tactics to move their behavior in a positive direction. Developer, this is about leading teams and managing individuals, uh, guiding them to, to, to achieve a desired outcome, and then to round it out, the visionary. So what what all of this leads up to is through all of this practice and all of these skills that you're building, being able to have vision, being able to develop strategy, being able to come up with ideas so that you are actually changing the way the world works, changing the way your company works, your community, your team. So this is what it looks like. And then if you um, if you're if you're interested in um, in all of that, uh, I actually, when, whenever you're watching this, because this will live out on my YouTube channel forever, but th this is the framework that I'm going to be using to help elevate people in my leadership coaching program. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a couple minutes now. Uh, that's kind of the main teaching portion of, of today's talk, this first half hour here. And then I'm just going to spend a quick couple minutes and let you know if you want more, I actually have all the 46 skills laid out for you, organized by this by this pyramid and this list. There's actually link access links to access the actual teaching inside my leadership coaching, which I actually counted up the other day is over a hundred at the moment, a hundred hours of coaching on these subjects. And I think I've covered, I think 40 of the 46 or something like that. So it's, 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 it's pretty, pretty full. So you get the idea of when I talk about foundational and capabilities and tangential skills, these are skills that will transcend specifically what you do. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you are interested in more, here's, here's the deal. Uh, let me get you to my leadership program here. You can, you can access this, this at your convenience. I want to show you what it is and I want to answer a few questions for you because I never really talk about this. This is the page. People that are already in the program, there's your little banner up there. We're meeting tomorrow. That We're shooting this live on January 13th and uh, we're, we're, we're live tomorrow. Uh, you can you know you can see some of the things I cover on the page, the topics, the library, the sample workbook. But basically, there and there's a, a cute little video there and a bunch of testimonials. Yes, if you get in for less than a dollar a day, I mean it's like 80 cents a day if you want. So it is about it is about career development and life fulfillment. A lot of you know me for job searching. That's cool. I teach on that too. Get your best job. Get your right job and then totally crush it with this program. And I'll go through what these topics are. But inside, you saw a pyramid there in the presentation. But really, we use different topics and categories where the skills sit. So lifestyle and wellness is one of them. Organization and productivity, success and high performance. And you can get a little more insight. Communication is obviously a big deal. Relationship building is a big deal. Building to... Oops, Building teams is uh, is a big deal, and um, and you actually can look inside. So uh, if you click if you click that little button right there, it will actually take you to the library. So there are videos. These are each are about two hours, and they're broken out by category. If you would like to see them, uh, so I actually it's pretty updated. It's it's maybe a month or two old. Uh, I think our annual reflection that was 2020. We did the 2021 uh, one already. You get awesome bonuses. You get the Career Accelerator program. If you are anybody who jumps in even for a month, uh, you get my productivity class and my goal setting master class if you jump in for a year. You can learn about each of these bonus programs if you, uh, I hate the expression, double click on the, on the button. It will take you to show you what's inside. So this one, for example, is about the first 90 days, getting promoted, generating ideas, building organizational skills, performance reviews. I think you get the theme 
but you can look at all of these programs. You also can see a sample. So inside the library are booklets like this. Uh, every, every single month and every single video that you saw in the library has a booklet like this. So every single month I write up the lesson. So I give the lesson in the video uh, or, or via, via Zoom, it's recorded, and then they get a write-up that outlines everything, and all of these workbooks are in your library. And then what you do is you, you after the session, there's thought provokers that help you facilitate ingraining the lesson, and then there's usually a challenge that I include in there. You can actually get a, that booklet that I just showed you if you just go to the leadership site. I hope my team has already put the, uh, the pin in there. Uh, I see the master your craft up there but the leadership program should be there if you want to check it out and then I always put the next date uh, for the for the live session which is tomorrow and then the next session beyond that will be a month from now you can get in for uh, as little as 81 cents a day if you pay for the year that's 297 that that saves you 291 bucks over the course of the 12 months and then and then you can join on a monthly basis if you want to try it out. You can, of course, cancel at any time. But you get, you can see what you get, and you can see a lot of the details. We do have a mobile app, and there are these frequently asked questions. And what I want to do now is I actually want to take you through some of the questions, just so you've got a clear picture of what this stuff, uh, what this stuff looks like. So. I get, I, get, I get asked these questions via email. I don't talk about this program as much publicly as I do some of the other things that you might see, but people want to know, hey, what, what is it? So I teach, so I, 33 years, a lot of what I have learned through as a corporate leader, an executive recruiter, a career coach, an angel investor, a board of directors member, I, lots of stuff that I've done. I channel in those kinds of strategies, tactics, and implementable processes that you can use. You can see that I do it via video. We meet. Uh, we meet month. I teach on these topics that I mentioned in the on the page. We meet every four weeks. It it pretty much is about every four weeks. There are some months of the year we meet every week because I might be teaching a course. One of those is going to be coming up. They're generally held on Fridays. Um, the live sessions I teach for about forty five minutes to an hour, and then we do a Q and A, and that Q and A is done live, meaning we take some questions from the chat, but we actually uh, get people up on the video cameras, and we get to actually go back and forth. Uh, so we do little case studies, maybe nine or ten of those each session. So it's 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 pretty pretty cool. Um, I put the replays up the same day. You can access all of those things that I showed you in the library as long as your membership is active. When your membership is inactive, then you don't get access to the library. It's just like it's just like Netflix. And so you can see that these are done. You get uh, you can come live. If you can't make the live show, you get the replays. Every all the videos still sit inside the system. The um, the workbooks are available to you, and then there are those bonus courses. Now, one thing you probably can't even imagine is I do offer online support. So if you are in the program and you're watching the focus video, for example, and you have questions on it, I answer them for you. So this is the only other supported online supported program that I offer through the Mile Walk Academy. The other one is my job search coaching program. But uh, this one is for development, uh, career development questions. What you're wondering about the plans or if the rates will change. So if you jump in on the month, it's forty nine dollars. That comes out to be about a buck sixty a day on the year. It's it's half of that. It's eighty cents, eighty one cents a day. Your rate will never change once you enroll, and it's good. It's what we call good till cancel. And then the um, the bonuses I mentioned, uh, the career accelerator. Everybody gets that five module course as well as uh, the productivity class and the goal setting class is a the major goal setting class is available for members on the annual oop, on the annual plan so that's part of the presentation that i'm going to be given tomorrow in more detail so i hope you enjoyed that i really appreciate you letting me you know teach you let me share this it's an awesome program 
and what I'm doing tomorrow, or if you're watching this on the recording, you can obviously jump into that uh, leadership coaching program at any time you want. Those assets are in there, the videos are in there, the workbooks are in there, the training bonus course bonuses are in there. If you have any questions, you can reach us at support at milewalk.com. So I hope that helps, and I hope the team, the team did, in fact, put the uh, link up there if you want to jump in. If you're watching me on the recording, Thank you so much. I'll see you next week.